Good afternoon, hello, my name is Daniel and if you're watching this video you are either doing Outlaw X Middle Distance Triathlon in a couple of weeks or you're thinking about it or you're just interested in it or you're just watching the video which I appreciate, thank you very much. Now I have done Outlaw X every year since its inception either in a relay or the full thing so I feel like I've got some experience to draw upon or I have got some experience to draw upon and I want to share that so that hopefully if you're doing the event you can have the best day that you can. Now I have not ever managed to win this race or get anywhere close so if that is your objective you're probably better talking to some other people other than myself but if you want to do anything other than win maybe this video will be useful to you now the event is a middle distance so 70.3 so it's 1.2 mile swim 56 mile bike ride and a 13.1 mile marathon half marathon run not a marathon run that'd be nasty now i wanted to have a look at the last couple of years so i've done it since 2019 but they've struggled in the previous years with the swim being shortened because the temperature has always seemed to drop at that last weekend in september however this year it's a little bit earlier so we won't have any problems with the temperature so i wanted to look at the swim from 2021 which was the last time the swim was a full distance and then i'll look at the bike and the run from this most recent year please do check the event guide for all safety related information and to check that the course is correct and so on i will not be held responsible if this has actually changed and i'm giving out the wrong information you need to check your event guide so here's the swim now on the day you can't get to the lake until you go down to the race so when you go and register you can't see the lake it's it's a private estate and it is down up like a private little lane this lake so don't try and get down there there might be a farmer with a shotgun but on the day you can get down there and i would describe thorsby lake as your classic british lake there might be some weeds there might be some mud but on the whole it is absolutely fine i've swam in much worse places and it is just a a classic lake in england to be honest um no complaints from me so this is the swim loop so you'll swim out from the right to the left you do a 90 degree left 90 degree left and then there's a little dog leg there and then back out to the finish as i say please do check the guide but i can't see them changing it too much and this year it was on i swam 34 39 and from memory i swam pretty hard and that's about maximum velocity for me so that is the swim one of the relevant note is t1 it's quite a long way from the lake to t1 or not a long way if you've done other events that have got long transitions it's probably about two minutes of running to transition maybe a little bit quicker if you're a faster runner than me but what that gives you time to do is gives you time to take your hat off to take your wetsuit off to do all those things so i wouldn't stress about when you get out of the water there's very often a ramp or something you need to get up don't be trying to undress yourself there get over that maybe pull your goggles up if you need to then start the run to transition and do all of that on the way to transition and then before you know it you're at transition and you've actually got your wetsuit down already and you're ready to go i don't think it's a slow transition at all but definitely make the use of that run from the lake to t1 on to the bike the bit that is the you know it's the biggest part of the course isn't it it's the bit where you can make and lose quite a lot now i know these roads very well i used to live very close to the route so i ride fairly well on the roads because i can hold speed around the corners if you can recce the course go and recce the course that's the best thing to do but if not a video like this might be helpful so numbers wise i rode 275 normal power uh, some group riders from solo a few well pace well well done daniel and i rode two hours and 21 minutes and i think then i was about 95 kilos actually i'm down to about 90 at the minute so that gives you an idea about where you might be in relation to that but let's have a look at a few of the parts of the course because i can remember pretty much all of this to be honest so um, i will talk about it from memory Coming out of transition, you'll go up a slight uphill to the main road. You'll probably be blowing pretty hard because you're around this transition and run out with your bike. Just control it, don't go too mad. This next bit, down to this right end roundabout, is mostly downhill. Recover down there. Soft pedal, free wheel, get up to speed and then recover. You will be able to get your breath back there quite easily. And then this next, next section down there is also quite fast. You go down first, then up a little bit. So just use those first few miles to recover. Now you'll need to check the wind direction on the day, but generally the wind will be coming from the west. So it'll be an easterly wind. So you'll have a tailwind out on that section, then a bit of crosswind and a bit of cross headwind, a bit more crosswind, then a headwind, then a crosswind, then a headwind again. So in short, you need to pace it to be like a negative split effort wise, or is it positive split? 
I'd save more gas for the end than at the beginning. But let me talk about where to spend your pennies and where not to spend your pennies. So for this first whole section here, I wouldn't be spending pennies. By spending pennies, I mean, don't be going like above your average race effort or pressing on if the wind is that same direction. I'd be saving myself all the way down here. I'd be trying to ride fast, yes, but I'd be, I'd be conserving as much as possible. I'd be using groups where possible. I'd be freewheeling where possible and really just controlling it. Because when you turn left here at 16 and a half miles, that's when, if the wind is from the westerly direction, you will need to start working because there'll be a crosswind. If you are in any groups, the benefit won't be as much. And you are also turning left a couple of times into what will probably be a headwind. So I would be spending some pennies there. Not a huge amount into the crosswind, maybe a little bit, but definitely into those little headwind sections. Because they'll be quite short, I'd press on into those and then recover into the crosswind. Crosswind is still quite slow. When I say press on, I'm talking 10 watts, 20 watts, not a, a huge amount. This section out here to the left, this feels like it goes on forever. This is a draggy climb. You'll probably be doing an annoying speed where it's not quite slow enough to sit up from your TT bike if you're on a TT bike, but it's not quite fast enough for you to feel like it's worthwhile being in the aero bars, obviously depending on what pace you're riding. I'd spend some pennies up here. I'd press on up here because when you turn right, you'll hopefully have a tailwind and you've also got a downhill, there's another little rise, but you'll have a bit of recovery down there. So I push on up there knowing that you've got that bit of recovery. This next section, the going is very good, as in the surface is very good. There's a fair few twists and turns, so you might find yourself freewheeling or maybe touching the brakes just to be safe. But I would definitely aim to conserve up there and really gather yourself because when you get to 30 miles and you turn left, if the wind direction is the same, that's gonna to be tough all the way across here. And if it isn't, you've got this little climb here, which does go on for quite a while and does ramp up towards the top there. So all the way across here, I'd be pressing on and I'd be spending some pennies. Again, not a huge amount, you still need to run afterwards, but and there's some descent, descent in there to recover, but I'd be pressing on up there. When you turn left at Ranskill, that is a really good going. So it's a lot of straight roads, a lot of wide open roads. If that is a crosswind, that's where you can really make up some ground. If somebody or people have gone too hard into this headwind section, they're not going to have the legs to really make progress down that bit. So if you're feeling good, I'd continue pressing on a little bit. Knowing that you've got this section coming up, which will probably be a headwind again, I'd play it by ear, see how you feel. If you don't feel great, you, I'd ease off a little bit and use this to recover. But if you do, I'd press on a bit more. When you turn right now towards workshop, and again, I'm basing this on the, the general wind direction, this is going to be tough. It is rolling, it is a little bit twisty. You get to the point where, what are we now, they're 43, 44 miles in. It'll be starting to bite, it'll be starting to hurt. But if you've paced it well, you'll have enough, enough to sort of press on and get it done. And at this point, if it is a westerly wind, you've got a bit of tailwind from 50 miles. So I'd always break that into two sections. This bit here is your last push and then you've got a nice bit of recovery down this road. It is rolling in sections, but it isn't that bad. And then when you turn left there, back to the finish. Now this last section here is the most rolling on the course. And in some years, I've really tried to press on on there and really try and climb the climbs fast. I don't actually think that is the best thing to do. It's so close to transition. I found it's really hampered my run when I've pressed on in that last section. If you're feeling great, then fine, do it. And maybe I just went too hard on the climbs, but these last little rollers, if you faded too much, you will lose a lot of time. But if you're digging too deep, you'll lose a lot of time on the run. So it's give and take, isn't it? But yeah, so that is the course. Please do check the course details on the official guide so to make sure it's the same route. But uh, yeah, that is my general uh, guidance. People ask what's the surfaces like. On the most part, good. I would say they're better than Outlaw Half Nottingham, similar to Outlaw Half Holcombe. Of course, we live in England. There are potholes. There are loose surfaces. Outlaw do a great job of putting orange paint around stuff and sweeping corners and all those sorts of things. Junctions are managed. I've never had to stop at a junction at an Outlaw event, but you should ride it as if it is an open road because the roads are open. The junctions will have some uh, traffic marshals and cones and stuff, but you never know what drivers do. Um, I would be careful of this section on, uh, from here because just this bit from the bottom right to the top right, there are a lot of low head rows and a lot of gateways. So if it is a strong crosswind, you'll think, oh, this is great. You'll go past the gateway and be like, whoa, what on earth was that? Uh, but other than that, there's nothing really to be too concerned about. This little section up here 
is quite twisty where you come off of, where is it, you come off of the main road, I think it is here, this part, I guess it is this part, if I find my little icon there, you come off the main road, it's a little descent and that is very fast and that's quite tight so I wouldn't overcook it there because you don't want to end up in a hedge bottom and hopefully you have a good ride. Now coming into transition, of course you've climbed at the beginning of the race so you've got a little descent into transition, it's perfect for taking your feet out of your shoes if you dismount like that or just recovering if you don't. So that's a good little end to the ride because coming to the gate it is uphill. Running the run. Now it is, I'm going to double check before I say this, it's three laps isn't it? One, two, three. Yes, three laps. Now it's a mixture of surfaces. It is grass, it is, whoop, it is, <laughs> steady on, get excited. It is grass, it is gravel, it is tarmac. There is a bit of everything. If it is dry, I would definitely use the fastest race trainers you've got. If it's wet, I probably still would. There's more gravel than there is actual grass and off-road. And I think even when it's wet, gravel is still okay to run on. I look at the course on the on registration day and see what you think, but I think that it is absolutely fine to run in race trainers, and I have run it in race trainers every year I've done it, although well, I didn't really get into the carbon shoe hype until last year or the year before. Anyway, the run. Now, I love this course. I would describe it as rolling, I describe it as testing, and it really does wear you down. Am I selling it to you yet? Three laps, I'd build into it. Don't go off too fast. I mean, here, the first mile I've done seven minutes there and then dropped down, but I've kept it quite consistent after that. That doesn't mean it was easy, it was actually really hard, but it is that undulating. You can't really, if you look at the mile splits, you can't really run it by just by pace you're going to have to pace it on the uphills and then uh, try and stride on the downhills a little bit and get some of that time back but um yeah i really enjoyed the run there's a couple of aid stations on the lap and of course you do the laps three times so there's plenty of aid stations i would use the first lap to learn the route learn how it runs there's a couple of steep downhills as well and i said so this part here is quite a steep downhill and then after the same point in the next lap make sure those aren't doing you too much damage and then on the second and third lap if you're feeling good then press on begin to work harder do not go out too hard on this run course because it will bite you in the backside the bit near the start finish is brutal everybody can see you it's on leg sapping grass and it goes up a little bit towards the top corner but triathlon is difficult if you're looking for something that isn't difficult i suggest you find another sport <laughs> so uh, yeah that's my tips for the swim bike and run for Alor X. I'm looking forward to racing this year. It is only a couple weeks away, so I'll hopefully see you there if you're doing it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and if you've got any other Outlaw X course tips, please do let me know in the comment section down below, because I'm sure others will benefit from it. I know this isn't dead sciencey, but I try and make it the most user-friendly information that I can. I don't want to get too drawn up in pace and power and all that jazz, just a general approach to the course, and I can't wait to be there. See you later.